25k and you're getting a base like this, yeah, this figure really deserves to bargain bin. Hi and welcome back to the channel, I'm Steven. Welcome to my studio. Today we have a massive figure haul and an early disclaimer. No, I am not rich. So, <laughs> we'll go into the details in a second, but this is sort of a miracle purchase over here. Uh, on my right side, yeah, you guys can see the logo in front already. This is AppSynth Studio, my very first AppSynth Studio figure, third-party resin figure, and it is something from Hong Kai Star Rail as mentioned in the title of this video. Meanwhile, the other three are once again genuine scale figures. Though I import them from China as usual instead of from Japan because shipping cost is a lot cheaper. And these three figures are a bit special in a way that they are bargain bin stuff. So without further ado, let's unbox them first before we go into additional details. Okay, so which one shall I start first? Let me turn on this one right up here. Okay, uh, let's begin with the one right in front of me, this one right here. This should be something from Girls Front Line, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's have a look. More corner braces, I love it a lot. Once again, I mentioned this in the past. Keep it if you can, because if you want to ship something in the future, can we use them? Otherwise, we'll just create too much plastic waste. Keep them if you can. I just opened, removed the four on top. I'm too lazy to remove the rest at the moment. Let's just open up the box first. Oh, this is from Azalein and we have a dented box right here. <laughs> oh no, there is a dent over here. But I think this is not too bad. I think I can just squeeze this back. Ah, okay, there we go. Just squeeze it back. We will get into the prices in a second, right? Okay, let's open up. Uh, what is her name? <laughs> oh yeah, Jean Bart, right? Okay. This is actually my very first skill figure from Azalea. Yes, my very first after all these years. I uh, actually pre-ordered something from Apex Toys, not yet released. I believe it is around November or December. This is my first Azalea figure. In the meantime, we'll discuss about the price. Ne never mind, let me mention it right now. So this scale figure of Jean Bart right here. I'm showing you guys a screenshot right now. 410 Chinese Yuan. Brand new. Yeah, for a genuine figure. So I'm putting the currency conversions on screen. This is not yet including shipping by the way. We'll get into that in a second. Okay. So... This one does not have any corner braces on it. Uh, I wonder if the figure box is heavily damaged, but I am not panicking yet because who knows? Most likely it is because there is a lot of empty space inside the box. So when there is some additional pressure, naturally the part with empty space would cave in first. But we'll see. Let's hope the figure is fine. Yes. Empty space. So this is box in the box. Really nice work from the... From the manufacturer over here. Oh! What? <laughs> Must be a free gift. Uh, Chinese sellers, they love doing it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's put it on the side. <sighs> okay, uh, so... Here we go. Shibuya scramble figure. Yeah, girls front line figure. Okay, this one is turning out to be in perfect condition. This is why you should not uh, judge what a figure would turn out based on the carton box condition alone. This one is in better shape than that Azalean figure earlier. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, all right. Oh, wow, the whole thing is sealed. I have to tear it apart. Yep, so this is Girls Frontline or Dolls Frontline as they call it in Japan Suomi Blissful Mission version 1x7 scale by Shibuya Scramble Figure or Eastream Pretty high quality figure manufacturer by the way Let's open up the third box, right? right here's the third one right here Oh, by the way uh, This Suomi, how much did I pay for her? Let me put up a screenshot again uh, yeah, 480 Chinese Yuan with the conversions on screen. Bargain bin. This is bargain bin pricing, right? Brand new figure right here. Okay, the third one. Let's go. These boxes are casting shadows to my video footage above. So I need to put them down for a second. Uh, Alright, this one is turning out Okay, this one has a small box. Ah? We have everything for today. We have Azalane, we have Girls Frontline, we have Ark Knights. So here we have a 1x7 scale Amiya from Ark Knights made by Actoys. Actoys is a branch of Imon Toys, Chinese figure brand by the way. And this came out like way back in year April 2022, around that time frame. So this figure is more than 2 years old by now. And this is why the figure bargain bins, you see. When a figure comes out for more than a year and there is still an excess overstock, they start discounting it aggressively because they try to encourage people to buy them. They don't want this old stuff sitting in a warehouse, taking up space, right? So, regarding this army, uh, uh, 340 Chinese yuan. <laughs> so, uh, my actual goal was to try and allocate a budget of 250 US dollars and see how many scale figures I can score within this 250 dollars of yeah, of budget range, right? And normally for 250, yeah, under most normal circumstances, you can only buy one single skill figure. Yeah, like if I were to go out and buy a new FGO figure release today, it would be 3, 200, 250 bucks, and that is not yet including shipping. But just because I went for something that was released a year, two years ago, and it is something that people don't really want for reasons I don't know, yeah. But, you know, from China to Malaysia, shipping is really cheap if you go for sea freight and you don't mind waiting. Now, this being old figures that came out a year or two ago, it does not matter if they arrive late because, I mean, people, those people who want to review these figures, they have already reviewed it on YouTube. So, I'm not chasing for speed over here. I'm okay with waiting in this specific case. The shipping cost domestically within China is 68 Chinese yuan and uh, for overseas shipping, China to Malaysia, only 70 Chinese yuan. Yeah, that is like 15, 15 US dollars to ship all these three figures from China to Malaysia. That is bonkers. That is insane. <laughs> yeah, and you'll see another figure, uh, another number right here, Hai Wa Yun Fei, 123 Chinese yuan. That is our 10%, uh, yeah, uh, tax in my country where, you know, for example, in Europe, if you import uh, anime figures, you get hit with a VAT, a VAT, yeah, a VAT, a VAT of around 20, 23% or so. Yeah, in my country, it is 10%. And you get charged this tax upon checkout from China. So you don't have to deal with troubles such as, you know, 
the figure is stuck at the customs department and then you need to drive there and sort things out. No, we get charged doing checkout itself and then the figures are shipped straight to our doorstep without any fuss. So this is incredibly convenient, which is why I prefer to import from China. If I can, Japan is like a last resort because uh, there is no such system for importing figures from, China, uh, from Japan. Yeah, the figure will be stuck at the customs department and then you need to drive there, waste your uh, annual leaves and then, you know, queue for your turn to pick up the parcel and pay tax on the spot. So it is a huge pain in the butt. Should I unbox these three figures first? We'll save it for later, right? Yeah, we'll go with the resident figure first because it is going to be a total nightmare. There are a lot of parts to put together. Alright, so right now we have this giant box over here. Yeah, giant in surface area but pretty thin as you can see. So this is Absinthe Studios 1x6 scale Jing Liu from Hongkai Star Real. Yeah, my very first ever Absinthe Studio figure. Let's hope she turns out okay. Oh, there is very nice padding on the four corners. Very nice. Look at this, guys. I am seriously impressed by the packaging. All right. Which side is the way up? Oh, this way up. So this is what the box looks like. And wow, <laughs> simple yet attractive. Very minimalist box, but <laughs> look at this, guys. Yeah, there is nothing on the box at all. The packaging is extremely simple, but very nice. Oh. Oh, uh, this must be bottom. Jeez. I hope I'm opening the figure the right way up. Ah. Oh. Oh, wow. This is huge for a 1x6 skill. Uh, no, I am not lifting the whole thing out. Let's leave it this way. Here's a Hadaka body part. We can already see that. Right? Yep. Okay. So as you guys can see over here, uh, just weeks ago, I revealed Yae Miko. And with Imagination Studio, they are kind of like, their packaging is very budget and their printing on their box is yeah very budget. And if you go for the deluxe version, uh, they actually send you additional boxes. If you buy, who knows, if you buy version A, version B and so on, then you get two or get three separate figures. But with the case of Epsin Studio, regarding of which version to buy, the packaging is different for every version. And this is the deluxe version. They decided to pack everything in one very attractive looking box. Now, right off the bat, my opinion of Epsin Studio has gone up quite a bit. Now, let's assemble the figure, right? I have actually been very impressed with uh, what AppSim Studio has been putting out based on pictures I saw online by other users alone. Just from the unboxing alone, it's giving me, yeah, really good vibes going on over here. Oh, alright. Wow. Look at this, guys. This is a beautiful base, man. Ooh. I like how this base isn't too bulky. Normally with resin figures, you need a heavy and bulky base. Otherwise, yeah, the figure might fall over and we have magnets in literally every, yeah, every foot pack over there, which is to be expected for a resin figure. And they even bothered to put all these soft paddings at the bottom. Yeah, I really love that. Hmm. Ooh. 
You know, after what happened to my figure unboxing of Yae Miko, I'm going to be extra careful from, <laughs> from now onwards. We have two magnetic foot packs and one metal foot pack right here. So... Okay, so looking good. Oh, what is this? Oh, a second base for you to display the Hadaka version. Okay. Uh, oh, I have to stop here. <laughs> this is the most I can show you guys. Uh, yeah, the details are all there, down there, but not as impressive as what you might think. So, this is all I can show you. <laughs> Yeah. Once again, I just realized that there is no instruction sheet at all. I have no idea why. Mm. Oh, extra parts for the base is supposed yeah. Oh my god, what is this? This is so small and fragile, I'm afraid now. How do you attach this to the figure? Is it magnetic or something? Uh, another one. You see, I actually suspect this ribbon over here is supposed to be somewhere around here, judging by the character design, but I can't be certain this is not magnetic, apparently. Am I supposed to force it in over here? Yes, it is magnetic. So, uh, this one over here goes into the back of the figure. Alright. So, uh, how did they uh, insert magnets into a part this small? Actually not. Magnets are only present in the figure and they use magnetic paint on the figure. Yeah, magnetic uh, paint, they do exist actually. So, this one should be on the front of the figure, I suppose. I don't know, man. <laughs> So what else do we have here? Mm. Oh, is this supposed to be for the base or something? Yeah. Oh, that is really nice. Okay, fortunately, this is turning out to be a very simple figure to put together. Yo, this looks sick, man. This looks really sick. Oh, alright. I think I might have figured out this one. This is here, right? <laughs> there you go. This goes into her right arm. Anyways, we move on to the last part, which is the face. Should I put? I'll just bring out both, right? The paintwork is incredible. I mean, look at the gradient work on the hair. Of course, you can also display her with this one. I have a broken hair strand. Finally, it happened. Here we go. It is broken over here. I have finally figured it out. So this piece over here, which was inside the box, but I did not notice, goes into the back of her arm right here. And finally, you just put her head on and... ah, uh, As you can see, it is so easy to knock off this piece. So yeah, fortunately it does not appear to be really fragile and I need to take extra care over here when plugging on, on her head. Ah. Or maybe I just put this aside for now. Okay, so the assembly is very straightforward, fortunately. Just that, yeah, this is a resin figure so be careful of breaking anything. 
As for the end of this hair strand over here, I don't think I care that much. I can always sand it down uh, until it is sharp again and we paint it over. I kind of know what paint to use over here. Alright, that is all for the unboxing part of Jing Liu. We'll get to her again at the end of today's video. And then we'll begin with a clean slate all over again. We put everything aside and unbox each of those three scale figures over here. Now I'll begin with Amiya right here. So here is a quick look of a box. It is really attractive for sure. And in case you guys are unaware of, uh, Act Toys has closed shop. Yeah, they are no longer around. Uh, Imon Toys is still around, but no, but not Act Toys, I mean. And, their last figure was that giant Azalean figure. Yeah, uh, the huge one. I can't remember her name at the moment. That was their last figure. No more new figures from Act Toys. Okay. So this thing is 380 Chinese yuan to that. Today, I think if you go to Taobao, you can still find her. So grab one if you're interested before she completely sells out. Okay, so... Mm. All right, putting her aside. I know it is weird for me to open up a box of Amiya and then pushing her aside and now I'm opening the other box again because you know, uh, it is easier for me to film the video. This is what this uh, Jean Bud figure looks like. It is by Wings Incorporated. And even after over 10 or even 15 years of collecting anime figures, this is my very first Wings Incorporated skill figure. I have only seen a few of them in anime events, in conventions where they display figures, but I have never personally purchased anything from them. This is my very first. I wonder if there is anything wrong with this figure or it is just a case of overproduction so they had to discount it. Right. Oh wow. The box is coming off here. Never mind. Okay. And of course, something like this, we need an instruction sheet, right? Uh... Oh, wow. There's so many glasses. I want the glasses, man, for figure photography purposes. Okay, so this is what the figure looks like. Okay, just having a quick glance at the figure over here, I think I can kind of rate this company already. Yeah, it is that quick. I need to take a closer look at the detail part, but this is easily B plus at the minimum. Third figure right here. I'm actually really curious about this one because this is my favorite figure. Uh, once again, Suomi from Girls Frontline by Shibuya Scramble figure. And this is a very, a very simple figure by the standards of Shibuya Scramble figure. We all know how this company loves to make a very uh, huge figure with all this diorama or effect part bases, but not the case with this one. Oh. Now let's take out the figure. Oh, that. This is a beautiful figure, and I have no idea why she bargained wind. Okay, I'll just remove this plastic flum. Yeah, very simple figure for something by Shibuya Scramble figure. Looks great, to be honest. She looks great. And now we shall assemble figures. I need to reposition my camera up here into a different angle before I proceed. So give me a second. Alright, let's continue where we left off and yeah, we'll begin with this figure I just took out from the box. Oh, I see. I think this figure was around 25,000 yen when she went on pre-order. Now, 25k and you're getting a base like this. Yeah, this figure really deserves to bargain bin. I was expecting better than this. This looks like 
uh, bukake colored base. Yeah, the color of bukake right here. Here comes the figure. Mm. Plastic food bags, by the way. <laughs> this is quite disappointing coming from Shibuya Scramble figure. Oh god, this is... <sighs> what in the world is wrong with this? Oh. Wow, nice job, Shibuya Scramble figure. What the heck? The foot pegs are not aligned with the holes on the base. That explains why the figure bargain bint. So what is happening over here is that, you know, it is like the holes are like this while the foot pegs are closer to each other because there is uh, some manufacturing error, I suppose. I'm not sure uh, how many figures are affected and I don't really want to bend the foot packs by force in case I break something. Naturally, I think I would want to use heat like hot water and you know, dunk the figure into hot water, hopefully soften the part slightly and then you try to bend the foot pack a little bit. But yeah, the packs are not aligning the base at all. Or otherwise, you can purposely break off one of the foot packs because there are four of them over here. So breaking one shouldn't affect the stability of the figure that much. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I'm just going to leave the figure like this. What the heck, man? To be honest with you, the figure looks great. But... <laughs> wow. Right, let's put her aside and... We'll go for the next figure. I'm a bit flustered already. Let's go for something simple. Amiya. I forgot about her rifle right here. Oh, this is really nice. I love the gunmetal paint work. Let's hope this one is fine. So here is what Amiya's base look like we are getting. Uh... Oh, uh, only one metal foot pack because this is very thin as you can see over here. So they had to use metal for this one. The other two are still plastic. Alright, fair enough. This is heavy. This is pretty heavy. So the figure is going to be rock solid and very stable, I suppose. And Amiya. This piece of sponge over is very important. It prevents breakage. For example, if during shipping, uh, yeah, there is an, an impact on the box from behind, bam, like that, and then it won't fracture the uh the ponytail this is very important so if you are selling off the figure later on remember to reinsert this one so that anyone who buys the figure from you does not receive a broken figure okay the plastic films are fine but the sponge is especially especially important over here Oh no, this is difficult. Uh, okay. Alright, this one is fine, but I'm not pushing the figure all the way in because, you know, later it will be difficult to put back, put her back into the box. This is fine. Oh wow, this is fragile. Oh! Now this really sucks because the whole thing uh, is permanently uh, attached to the base. So if I were to do figure photography later, I want to do my own diorama, uh, yeah, this is a big problem. No, I do not want to risk uh, pulling the figure out from the base. Everything appears to be plastic, including the packs. So you have to be careful with this one right here. Uh, though we have additional props. Okay, so this is very simple to assemble apparently. Oh wow, this is fragile, man.
Okay, so at least these two uh, gods over here, they are, they are actual metal. So I don't really see a major problem, but you have to be careful. And every single hook over here, yeah, you are supposed to plug in the wine glasses over here, which I'm leaving out for the time being. So here we are, three scale figures for 250 US dollars. Was it worth it? Now, uh, my initial preliminary impressions at the moment looking at the figures paint work i think all three are great figures they are they are not bad purchases at all though with that swarmy figure over here uh there will be some interventions needed like maybe you need to modify the foot pack or even break off one but uh this is really cheap right personally at this price point yeah i don't mind it at all like <laughs> if I paid 25,000 yen for her, I would be quite pissed. But yeah, uh, with the level of detail this figure, uh, Wing Company is putting out for this figure, I would rank them at B plus or so. Yeah, this is not A level yet. Slightly lacking in shading in paintwork, but there will be a separate video on the full review later on, right? This is my way of doing things. There will be separate reviews on each individual figure's later on now the paint work on amia is a lot more impressive run her jacket over here mm, very nice different tones of dark blue color all right back to this swarmy figure i just noticed that this part is actually removable so if i were to put down a figure right here and you pay attention to this foot pack yeah it is like slightly deformed it is slanting inwards as for today's entire look overall i'm very happy with this purchase very happy and my early impressions of this Jingyu figure despite that minor setback regarding her hair strand behind her which is not really visible from the front yeah uh, this is an incredible Jingyu figure and I have zero regrets buying it in fact this Jingyu figure is my best resin figure to date my best third party resin figure far surpassing Kafka and Yae Miko by Imagination Studio and also yeah Dodomo Studios Mind Kitagawa that was quite the train wreck but Dodomo has been getting better lately still among the stuff I bought this is the absolute best it is quite the sight to behold so you guys can look forward to my skill figure review individually later on I will review Jingyu first because this is a new release by the way just came out in late June so we'll see and until then, if you found this video to be entertaining or helpful in any way, please give this video a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe to this channel for anime figure content every week. Until then, I'll see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.